Vsauce, Merlin here, and I know everything about what you know and think. Everything. I've built a vacation home in your mind and I'm lounging by the pool sipping chocolate milk right now. Ah. And I can prove it with a little magic that amazed TV audiences worldwide by having them rub their fingers all over their screens. It starts with a clock, and each of the 12 numbers are arranged as you'd expect. You'll be moving around this clock in a way that's random to me. You'll know which numbers you choose along the way, but I won't. How could I? You're wherever you are, and I'm in my mom's basement. Right? Wrong! Well, I am in my mom's basement, but with the power of my fake wizard beard, no matter what number you choose, I will know where you are. Now clear your mind of its usual thoughts. Memes, pizza rolls, energy drinks, and select a number. It can be any number from 1 to 12, and only you will know what it is. Ready? Go. Pick a number. Got a number? Good. Now I need you to spell your number, starting at 12 and moving clockwise one step for each letter in the word. If your secret number is 7, then you'd move 5 steps. S E V E N and land on the 5. If you pick uh, 11, you'd move 6 steps. E L E V E N and land on the 6. Hold your finger over the screen starting at 12 and count your number's letters until you're on your new number. Okay? Go ahead. All right, now spell your new number, moving one position clockwise for each letter in that number. If you're on the three, then move five spaces, T, H, R, E, E. If you're on the six, then move three spaces, S, I, X. If you run out of spaces and get back to the 12, just keep going around the same way a clock's hands move. Okay. Did you do it? We're gonna do this one more time. Spell your new number again and then stop. I'll give you a second to do that. Okay. Now I have no idea what number you started with or the second one you landed on, let alone the third number that you landed on after that. But I do know that you are not on the two. So I'm gonna get rid of that. And I know that you're not on the four either, or the eight, or the 12. As I sip my delicious chocolate milk next to your mind pool, I can see that you weren't on any of those numbers, so we don't need them. Hey, let's go one more round. Spell your new number and skip the empty spaces. One letter, one position, and stop when you're done. If you're on the five, you'll move four spaces. F I V E, skipping the empty eight space and landing on the 10. Go ahead. Are you on the 10? No, 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 you are not on the 10. So the 10 is gone. You're on the three. No, 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 no. You are not on the three. That's gone too. The nine gone or the one gone you're on the six and you've just witnessed the magic of the cruskal count all right hold on this beard is really getting itchy this hat is super tight one second Let me, hold on oh the troubles of having a beard 
Oh, that's better. So magician David Copperfield has performed illusions with several different variations of this trick from using a clock face to celebrities to vacation destinations. He mesmerized audiences in live shows and TV shows with his predictive power. But the man who discovered the Kruskal count was mathematician and physicist Martin Kruskal, who took some delight in knowing that it often confused actual magicians because it wasn't based on any kind of sleight of hand. Or it was based on math. So what is actually going on here? Let's, let's dissect what happens in the clock trick. You're starting at 12 and you have four possible moves. Numbers that contain three, four, five, or six letters. You've got 12 numbers to choose from, but we only have four possible pathways forward. And therefore I know no matter what number you choose, you'll end up on the three, four, five, or six after your first move. For your second move, you'll either move five, four, four, or three, which means that every single player winds up on either the eight or the nine. Notice at no point in the game can anyone even land on the two, seven, 10, 11, or 12. I know that before we start, but you probably won't notice it as you play. And along the way, I remind you that these choices are yours and are totally random to me because reinforcing that randomness distracts you from thinking about any pattern that you might be encountering. On the third move, if you're on the eight, you'll move five spaces to the one. If you're on the nine, you'll move four spaces to the one. And that's it. It's already game over for you and you didn't even know it. Then the performance really starts. I can take away numbers like two, four, eight, and 12 because I know for a fact that you're on the one. It's 100% guaranteed, but there's a very subtle element to choosing which numbers to erase. Those four removed numbers have letter values of three, four, five, and six. So that subconsciously reinforces that I'm not eliminating some specific element or pattern, like just removing all of the possibilities with three letters. It's spread out among the choices. So to you, it seems just that much more random. Really, I can do anything once you're all on the one. I don't have to do anything. If we just kept playing, you'd all just go from the one to the four. I could also add in as many rounds as I wanted because you're all in sync at that point. Or I could remove different numbers to get you to the final number that's best positioned on camera, which is probably why Copperfield wanted to land on the six in the center of the screen. It just looked better on TV, so great. We figured out the trick, kinda, not exactly. What is happening here? What Kruskal discovered was that a counting game like this is really a chain of numbers. Every new number is a new link in the chain. And when two chains eventually intersect on the same link, then they become the same chain from there on out. Knowing that you can appear to predict a highly improbable result, even when you don't know where the chain began. Let me show you another example. Oop. The predictive power of Kruskal's count is seen most easily with a deck of cards. So allow me to show you my wonderful wiener. Dogs playing cards. I'll shuffle a full wonderful wiener dogs deck of 52 cards and deal out 10. You need to choose one of these 10 cards. Obviously, I won't know which one you choose because I recorded this video in the past and you're watching it in your present, which is my future. Then you'll proceed to count forward from that card until we get through the whole deck. Aces count as one and face cards count as five and every other card counts as the numerical value it displays. So like nine equals nine. So if you choose to start with card number five, that's a queen, which is worth five and you'll go five spaces. One, two, three, 
four, five, and land on an ace, which is one. So then you'll go one, land on a king, which is five. One, two, three, four, five, land on a 10, and then you'll go 10. Got it? And you'll continue this until you can't make a full move. So if you land on this nine, you obviously can't go nine spaces. So this nine would be your final card. And even though I don't know what card you picked to start, I'll be able to tell you which card is the last one in your sequence. Here's how. I'll also choose a number from one to 10. Let's say I pick four, which is a four. The fourth card will be my first link in the chain, which Kruskal called a key card. And together, without telling each other, because I don't know which card you're starting with, we're both going to count forward from our respective cards. Since I'm starting on the fourth card, which is a four, I'll count four spaces to another card. One, two, three, four, which is a five. And continue until the end. You'll do the same thing for your mystery card, and then it's uh, it's wiener time. Okay, go ahead, let's start. Your last card in the sequence is that nine, because so is mine. Using the Kruskal count, I can predict what your final card will be without knowing where you started because it doesn't really matter. At a certain point, our chains intersected on the same key card and followed the same path to the end. And this always works, doesn't it? No, it doesn't. About one in six of you are already typing a rage-soaked comment about how dumb I am for choosing the wrong number. And joke's on you, buddy, because I knew that would happen. The Kruskal's count with a 52-card deck only works about 85% of the time. And if our final key cards weren't the same, then you chose one of the numbers that put you on one of the 15% of chains that land me in the fail category. But the longer our chains go, the more chances they have to intersect. So if we played two decks of 52 cards, the odds of me predicting the right final card for you jump to 95%. Let's just see exactly how this can play out. I'll shuffle and deal another 10 cards, color code them, and mark each chain's key cards. As you can see, five out of the 10 cards linked up right away on this nine, and then ended up on this 10. The fourth and ninth cards linked up on this seven, and then met up with the others on this queen. But three of the 10 just kind of did their own thing and converged on a second mini chain. The fifth, eighth, and 10th cards linked up together on this jack and ended up on a six. There are a couple of reasons for this. First, landing on a couple of nines caused huge jumps that reduced chain link opportunities. The more key cards in a sequence, the more opportunities to overlap with the main chain. If we played with two or three decks, our big chain and little chain would be almost certain to converge, but this game ended up being a weird outlier where the magician had a much smaller chance of success than they usually would. That's the way we know that this isn't magic. Magic works 100% of the time because it's engineered and manufactured to be successful. Probability isn't quite as predictable. There's actually a great interactive version by Alex Frieden and Ravi Montenegro from the University of Massachusetts Lowell that you can play online and I'll link below because I like you. Yeah, this is a fun little trick that you can use to mess with your little brother's mind, but what's the point? The Kruskal count feels like magic, but is considered a probabilistic paradox. Technically speaking, it's a veridical one, and 
it has real-world computational applications. In 1978, John Pollard applied it to code breaking and developed a Lambda method for catching kangaroos, also known as the kangaroo algorithm, which is a great name for an algorithm. But to me, the trick is an incredible illustration of how math can be at the heart of coincidence. What are the chances you run into your old gym teacher at the supermarket? What are the odds that you end up going to the same college as the booger boy who moved away in first grade? We're all living in different systems at the same time, some large, some small, some open, some closed. And every one of our actions is another link in our own chains. What we call fate or coincidence may really be the result of a hidden mathematical master pulling the probability puppet strings of our existences together. At which point we can decide how closely we want to align our chains from that point on. Which is cool because you probably don't want to go home with your old gym teacher. Especially since he saw you buy cat food and... You don't even have a cat. And as always, thanks for watching. <laughs>